Hi FlossTube, I'm Jennifer. Welcome to my channel, Stitching with the Waves. Um, welcome back if you're a subscriber or watched me before and welcome. I'm glad you found my channel if you're new here. Um, thank you everybody so much for all the comments. I know there is just an absolute ton of FlossTube content out there right now. Everybody is recording extra and recording lots of different stash types and all sorts of fun stuff. So I, you have your choice of what to watch. I really appreciate you watching my show. So I wanted to just say a really sincere thank you to all of you at the beginning here. Uh, I'm going to jump in to cross stitch because it's been a couple of weeks since I recorded and I've got a lot to show you. So I thought I would start off with some finished stuff, FFOs. Um, one of the things I did, it's like stitchy related. So I'll start with that one and then we'll jump into like the real cross stitch. I had to get an order from Michaels of DMC because I had a few threads that I needed that I didn't have for some projects coming up. And Michaels seems to be the main place where I can order specific DMC colors. Like I can't order specific DMCs from Joann's for curbside pickup, but I can from Michael's. So when I put in the order at Michael's, I also looked around to see what else there was. And I found this little tray, which I have been looking for the perfect size tray for a long time to go next to my stitchy spot. So it's very plain. Um, it was just a like natural wood color when I got it. And I painted it this kind of blue color from a sample paint jar that I had at home. And it just sits next to my stitchy spot. So let me see if I can show you what's in it without spilling everything. So I've got the tray with the um, berry basket pin keep pattern in it that I made um, a few videos ago. I showed you the FFO of that and that's from Nikki's Creations from a Just Cross Stitch magazine. Then I've got my glass brick jar up front here. <laughs> that's close. I have this antique wooden spool or industrial bobbin that I had gotten. It holds my scissors really perfectly. Of course I want to stitch something to go around that at some point but this is just the start of my little stitchy tray to go next to my stitchy spot and hold all my stuff. It's just nice to have a, I wanted something to corral all the little things that I get collected there and that is working out perfectly. I finished it last week, so it's been working really well. Sorry for the background noise. Uh, I <laughs> tried to record this yesterday and when I tried to edit out all of the, it was so choppy because I had like six different videos from all the interruptions and it just, it was so choppy, it didn't make any sense. So today, everybody's kind of cranky and in a bad mood. So they're all just watching shows on their own device. So there's kind of a lot of background noise and I apologize for that, but hopefully we won't have any fighting. All right, so FFOs. I did FFO. I'm gonna show you kind of the least exciting to the more exciting here, at least in my mind. This is Spring from Little House Needleworks. It's the last monochromatic, um, of the series, of the season series that I needed to finish to complete my set. So um, this is a pattern that comes with the Belsoi threads in it. And I did not have any fabric I liked for FFOing this. So my daughter picked out this one, this blue check. It's just, the background is too creamy compared to the more like grayish green color of the cross stitch fabric. So I just, barely tacked the stitching part onto the fabric. Um, I'm not gonna be getting to a store anytime soon um, in person to browse the different fabrics. And I just, it's hard for me to shop fabrics online. It's hard, even though they put the ruler next to the fabric, it's hard to tell the scale of the print and stuff. So I just figured she loves this, I'll finish it on here. And then next spring, uh, hopefully I'll have been able to get out to a store <laughs> within the next year to find a fabric that I really like that goes with this a lot better. So I just kept the same bow that I was using for winter because I thought it went fine for spring. Um, and then I just changed these out because they are on magnets and washers. So there we go. I now have the full year. So I had summer FFO'd um, from last year. So it was, uh, as soon as we get around to that, I'm ready to put that season out again. So that was kind of the first seasonal pattern that I started doing with that washers and magnets technique that Priscilla and Chelsea do from Real Housewives Cross Stitch, and I really love that. So the second one is my monthly cottage series, and these are from Fleur de Lynn, which is a French shop. Um, she has a website that you can purchase the PDFs. So I have this little pedestal that I got at, I think, either Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I can't remember which one. And there is my color changes and stuff for May. I changed up the cottage to make it 
more of a purpley color and use some bluish purple colors in this. Um, it's called Lilies of the Valley in May. So you've got the Lilies of the Valley at the bottom and a couple large ones up top. And then the Magnolia tree is in bloom with all the little butterflies. So I thought that was super cute. And this one, I had what I needed as far as trims and embellishments and fabric. So I actually picked the fabric. I got smart after I couldn't find anything for any fabric to FFO spring in my stash. I got smart with May and found fabric first that I wanted to use and then picked my floss colors based on that. So I would actually be able to FFO this one completely and have it done. And then I did have two months I had stitched. So this is February, the first one I had done and February had been up. I just took it down like two days ago when I finally FFO'd May. I had also finished stitching March and April, which I think I had showed you both of those uh, stitching when the stitching was finished and I just FFO'd them. I found fabric in my stash that I liked to go as the background, but I don't have the right trims. Um, I just don't have a big stash of trims and like I could tell, oh, I need white ribbon, but I don't have the white width. You know, I have a different width of white ribbon, but it won't work. So for this size, so I just, um, these two, since I'm not going to be displaying them until next year anyway, I decided to hold off rather than just using what I did have in my stash that wasn't quite right. I just wait and when I can get to a store, I'll pick up um, some more supplies for FFOing. I really just started building up my stash of that stuff in like January and February. I made a big trip to the store and uh, when some stuff was on sale and got ribbon and trims and bought some half yards of cotton print fabrics. So I'm starting to get a stash, but I need to make a few more trips to the store like that. And right now that's just not possible. So these two will just hold off until then. So I think that's all of my FFO'd stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's everything I've FFO'd so far. Um, I have some more stuff I'm working on, so that'll be fun. I've found it works out pretty well. I need to sit at the table here. My kids do there. This is our dining room, which is really much more of our art room. And this is where my kids do all their schoolwork now that they're home all the time. So I need to be sitting at this table with them. They don't need my 100% attention. A lot of their stuff is, um, you know, they need to read something on the computer or watch a video on the computer and then answer questions. So they need help because sometimes the links don't work or they can't get logged into the right program and they need help with that or they just want me sitting here next to them. But they don't. I don't need to sit there and watch the video with them. They can do that on their own and then I take a couple of minutes to iron the fabric or get it cut out or get it wrapped around the sticky board or whatever. So that's working out well. It's taking a long time to get one piece done, but at least I'm like incrementally getting it done, which is more than I can say was happening before. So that's been great. So let's move into whips. I'm gonna show you kind of the least exciting one first. This is my Petite Point project, the Kansu Destiny Knot Carpet from Making Chinese Carpets and Rugs, I think is the name of the book it came from. So it's just beautiful. I love the blue and white colors. And I have just been working on filling in background. <laughs> so I haven't really done a whole lot more since I showed this to you last. And I'm just using my camera again. So the Petite Point projects don't really show up that well when I'm using just my phone camera. The stitches just don't, it can't focus in as closely. Um, but I, like I said, I, all I've been doing is filling in that A crew background. Um, just row upon row upon row. So I try to do 30 minutes a day on this, um, three or four days a week. And right now it's just, you know, it doesn't look like a whole lot of progress because it just takes, there's so much background in this particular section of the project. So that is all I've been doing for Petite Point. Then in my last video, I had told you about how I watched the Fiber Talk uh, Easter Sunday Stitchathon show that Vanna and Gary had put on. And I was the super, super lucky winner of $100 worth of free finishing from Vanna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. So just super exciting because she is a fabulous, fabulous finisher. And her stuff is just impeccable. She does a ton of tutorial videos, which I've watched a lot of to try and figure out all the tips and techniques for finishing stuff. So I highly recommend you go over to her floss tube channel and watch those if you haven't ever checked them out. And I had in my last video shown you three pieces I was gonna send to her that were finished. So the first one is the 12 Days of Christmas from Paulette Stewart's blog. That's a free pattern on there. And then 
This is Summer House Stitchworks Fragments in Time 2018. This is number one. I feel like this is, there's just not that much light today. It's so cloudy out, but we'll make do. That one, I totally changed up the colors on that one. That's totally different. And then this is from the blog of La Comtesse de Pointe de Croix. She is a French blogger. And this is called Sweet Season. So that's gonna be finished as a Christmas ornament. Sorry, this Fragments in Time will be finished as a pillow, a small little pillow. And 12 Days of Christmas will be finished as a mounted flat fold. Okay, so those are the three that I had done. And I was able to pick out one more ornament to have her finish, which I ended up picking uh, the, from a French blogger and another freebie. It, her blog is called The Grills de Maurice, and it's M-A-R-Y-S-E is her, how you spell her name. And this is still on there, I believe. It's called ABC Maison Bleu. So I changed the pink colors of the roses because I didn't have the pinks that were called for, but everything else I kept the same. And this is also gonna be a small little ornament, like a Christmas ornament sort of thing, but I'm gonna hang it year round on my china cabinet. I'll show you. We don't jiggle too much. This china cabinet right over here that has all of my uh, fancy, like, you know, uh, china in it. So it'll just hang on the knob of that during the year. So that is the pile of stuff I'm gonna to send to Bonna. So I had to order, I still have it because I had to order envelopes. I didn't have an envelope for mailing it to her. Um, normally I would just go into the post office and grab an envelope and stick the stuff in and send the package from there. But this time around, I wanna figure out how to do that mail it from home, the click and ship thing where the postman just takes it, you put it in the envelope at your, and just have them like schedule a pickup to come get it from your house because I don't wanna go in the post office right now. So I gotta, I've got them finished, they're ready to go. My order of envelopes has shipped, they're just not here yet. So as soon as they are, I'm gonna get that stuff off in the mail to Vana and as soon as it comes back, I will show you guys. So that's super exciting. All right, so I finished that stuff up. I kind of dropped what I wanted to do in April because I wanted to get that stuff finished and shipped out to her as soon as possible. So when I finished that, I still had about five days left in April. So I was like, all right, what do I want to finish up? And one of the things I worked on was summer sampler banner from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. And I got that to be about halfway done. I'm just about halfway on it. So I'm changing up some of the colors to make it a little more blue. I think last time I showed it to you, I was working on like the peas up here or maybe the green vine. It was somewhere up above the word summer, I think. It's been a while, so I'm not sure. I just have two more lines to do up here at the very top, and then the trunks are about halfway through, so I have the, the bottom half down here to do. But I've got that taken care of. So my plan for May, I don't wanna to totally put away all of my stitching, so I'll tell you about that as I get into some of the mania stuff here coming up. Um, let me, actually, let me just pull out the other one and talk about that now since we're kind of bringing it up. Okay, here we go. Um, so I wanted to take one day a week, which I think will be either Saturday or Sunday. I'm gonna do like seasonal Saturday or Sunday. And I'll work on getting first my June cottage of the month. So this is like, I just showed you the FFO of May. Here's June from Fleur de Lynn, and it is roses in June. So, I had to, I changed up some of the colors to make them blue. And then the pinks in those roses up there at the very top next to the word June, there are six colors of rose pink. Um, there are actually seven colors of pink in this whole thing. And those roses, I mean, they're tiny. They're like five, five stitches by five stitches. They're super tiny. So I ended up picking, I didn't have the lightest pink. So I picked like a peachy kind of pink um, that, was, that I think will look good with it. And then I figured for the other color, it was one of the middle tones, like right in the middle of that family of seven pinks. I'll just, I'm just not gonna use it. A lot of it is used um, in the trellis. So each of the roses in the trellis is two colors, a lighter and a darker. So I figured wherever it calls for that one, I'll just pick one of the other colors out of that family of six that I do have. 
um, rather than worrying about getting one more color of DMC. Because of course I'd already put in my order at Michael's for picking up before I realized that I was missing two colors that I needed for this. And I was not gonna do another order just to get those two for like probably a total of 10 or 12 stitches completely in the whole thing. So I'm just making do with what I've got. We'll figure that out as we go along. So this is where I'm at. I worked on this um, over the weekend after May started just for one day. And I'm trying to remember, sorry, give me one second. Oh yeah, that's the bottom. Okay, it, I'm, I only have the border done right now, so it's a little tricky to remember which way is up right now. But I'm just using a pretty like pale aqua blue for one of the blue shades in here to make it just kind of like summer EBG feel. And I've gotten a lot of the white lace border going. So I'm gonna work on either Saturday or Sunday, probably Saturday will be like seasonal Saturday. So every Saturday in May, I will work on this June piece until it's done. And then once it's done, I will pick up the summer sampler banner again and work on this as much as, get as much of this as done as I can. And as soon as May is over, once we get into June, I will just 100% focus on this every day until I get it done so that I can get this FFO'd. It goes right up here on my clock on the bottom of like this, there's a clock on the top of this shingle. So I've got spring up there right now and I really wanna get summer finished and FFO'd in time to actually, you know, have it up. So there's that one. Then I decided I wanted to also keep going on the free patterns. So I finished, um, I, just, I, wanted, I wanted to do like Freebie Friday. And so I picked out one of the Freebie Friday patterns. There's a bunch of them that I like. And the next one that I wanted to do was the one from Jeanette Douglas. And it just has the, I don't have the pattern here with me. It doesn't have a picture of the finished thing, but here's what I have so far. I worked on this last Friday, just one day. I'm changing up the colors of the flowers, of course, to be blue, surprise. Um, so that's what I have so far. That was one day's worth of work. And today is also Friday, the second Friday in May. So I'm gonna pick this back up today and finish it. I don't wanna start the new freebie every Friday. I certainly have enough picked out that I could, but then I'll end up with this pile of freebies that's not done and I don't want a ton of whips at the end of May. So I'm just gonna work on this one and when it's done, then I'll pick another one. So if I finish this today, then I'll pick another freebie and get it started. Otherwise I'll start another one next Friday or whenever this is done. But I think I should be able to finish that today. All right, so then my other day of the week in May, three days it'll be something. Freebie Friday, seasonal Saturday, and then Santa Sunday will be Pringles. So it is coming along. If you don't remember what it looks like, I'll hold up. It's probably gonna have a big glare. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I am down there on the first story. I just finished that giant Kringle sign and got to work. Got the first few stitches down there in the first floor. So do the little scrolls since it's so big. So last time I showed it to you, I think I had put in the Kringles lettering and I was working on making just one outline of this black oval. And then that way I just spent the next, I don't even know how many days, just filling in all of that black in the center. But it made it really easy because it was just filling, so it was fast. Uh, so now I'm working my way down here, that first floor, it's a lot of black, you guys. A lot of black outlining. So I'm gonna work on that, but I'm super excited to get that first floor structure in so I can start working on the rooms. Um, it's coming along way faster than I ever thought it would because when I ordered the pattern, I know we were gonna be in quarantine and I'm really glad I did because I'm getting a lot of it done. I'm really knocking it out. All right, um, that is all of my stitching that I've started. Just looking around at my piles of stuff. Yes, that is everything I have started. So the only other thing, wait, I left it over. I was gonna iron my other piece, left it on the ironing board. Forgot to iron it before I push start. Let me grab it. Okay, here we go. All right, so this is my other piece for May, my true mania piece of what I was going to work on. So a little bit of wrinkles, but whatever, you guys won't care. So this is for my printer's tray. So a while back I did this 
little house right here as kind of a trial run. I had this house and I filled up all the compartments with little cross stitch pieces. I used one color of fabric and one color of thread. I did 40 count over one and it took forever because 40 count over one is super tiny and I love how it turned out. So it was kind of a good learning experience for filling my printer's tray. So the printer's tray, if you're not familiar, or it might be called a letterpress tray, back from when um, printers had to take the individual little wood tiles with letters on them and place them in a tray and then press them through the letterpress to get a page of a newspaper or a book printed. Um, they kept all those little tiny letters in drawers in the cabinets and the drawers had all these little compartments so you could keep each letter or um, punctuation or whatever in a separate little container. So it's still downstairs right now in my basement. It had a couple of parts that needed to be glued and then it also needed a, a seal, coat of sealant over it. So I am in the process of getting that done so I can get it hung up. But I wanted to get started on the stitching. So for May, my goal originally was to fill 20 compartments. And after seeing how quickly the stitching's going, my new goal is to stitch a piece for 20 compartments and fill 20 compartments with other things. So the other things, I mean like just taking a piece of sticky board and covering it in a fabric, a printed fabric, or covering it in a solid fabric and putting some like lace trim across it. Um, I have some little tiny mini wood spools that I might stack up in one compartment, things like that. Just filling the little compartments with different little things. Um, it has, I think, 54 compartments. So if I get 40 of them filled, I think that'll look really good. It won't look like I've just started it. It'll look like I've really accomplished something with it. So I'm excited to see it by the end of this month and hopefully get that accomplished. I've got almost five pieces of stitching completed in four days worth of stitching. So I picked an alphabet and I'm doing the alphabet. This is on 28 count white Monaco. I'm doing the alphabet over two. Is that focusing? There we go. So I've gotten A, B, and C done. So some of the compartments I'll stitch over one and some of them I'm gonna stitch over two. So then I picked a floral border. The alphabet I just stitched in DMC. This uh, floral border that I picked out, I stitched in, it was one of the cottage garden threads that I got from Stitchy Box. It was called Morning Glory. I really love how it's stitched up on the 28 count over one. It seems to me to be a little bit thinner than DMC. And so it just lays better, you know, like it's the DMC over one on this 28 count Monaco. I don't know. I just, I don't, it, it's fine. I just don't love how it lays. This cottage garden thread lays so nicely. The stitches are just so nice and even and perfect um, because the threads just lay down so nicely. So love how that one turned out. I love that color. It makes me want to order more of these threads. Then I also stitched this little tea set. We've got the teapot and the sugar and the creamer. I just have a little bit right there in the very center of the creamer. A couple more lines I need to finish off on that one. So next time I pick this up, I'll work on that. Get that done and then I'll switch back and probably do a few more letters of the alphabet. So I have three pieces of this fabric that I bought and hopefully that's gonna end up being enough. This was the only size Monaco that I could get at the time when I ordered. Um, so I ordered three packages of it and I kind of did a rough calculation and I think that'll hopefully be enough. So that is where I'm at right now with that mania thing. So I guess I'm almost a quarter of the way done, do a couple more stitches there and I'll be a quarter of the way done with that. I did all three of those letters in one day. Um, so I'm hopeful that the letters will go pretty quickly. And if I get towards the end of May and I'm not quite making it to 20, I'll just stitch a bunch of letters because they're so fast. Um, otherwise I'll try and get some of the bigger compartments filled. And yeah, excited about that and how it's coming together. So I can't wait to get the tray finish fixing it up and get it up here and hung up so I can start filling them. All right, my only other project that I'm gonna work on in May, that I have plans to work on in May, because you know, plans change, right? Is Stitching Book Club from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. So Stitching Book Club is on their, just getting ready to start their third book, which will be The Secret Garden. So it's gonna, it's available to purchase right now on her Etsy shop and it will be, the first part of the pattern will be shipped out, will be emailed out 
it's either May 24th or 26th, I can't remember which day. And the fabric that's recommended is this chocolate raspberry fabric, a really, really dark brown. And she recommended staying with something that is like a dark brown dirt earth color um, in order for the pattern to make sense. So I had this 40 count, it's from R&R, &R, and I think it's 18th century rook is the color. So it's like a, a fairly dark brown. I you know, purchased it and I wasn't sure if I'm gonna be able to see the, the holes in it. I haven't tried using it before. I've had it in my stash, but I've never tried using it. So if it doesn't work out, if it's too dark and I can't see the holes, I do have some lighter uh, 40 count fabric that I was thinking I would just stick in coffee for hours and hours and bake in the oven and however dark it comes out is what I'll go with um, instead because I'm just not sure if I'll be able to see the dark fabric very well. Hopefully it'll work out okay. Um, and then I pulled out threads. I have them all ready to go. She said the blues and greens used the most. So I pulled out my whole bag of DMC. I just keep them in these floss away bags. So those are the blues and greens. And then for the rest of the colors, she said a lot, there's a ton of colors. And she said a lot of them are only used for a few stitches. So I just made my own little floss drops from a purple manila folder that I had. And I took one length of DMC off of my skein and put it on here. So, um, I, if I need more than just that one length, I'll go back to my main stash and get it. But I don't, I don't think I will because I'm doing 40 count over one. And there's just, I was trying to show it to you on here, but I'm not good at holding stuff. Um, so with 40 count for one, you know, that's six strands of floss. And I, if it's only a few stitches, I probably just won't need that much because it goes, the floss goes a lot further on 40 count. So that is my stuff all ready to go for stitching book club. And then the only other thing I've been working on that I thought you guys might be interested in seeing is my big old stack here. Let me get them all picked up. This is my big old stack of PDFs that I had saved on my computer <laughs> that I want to stitch. Now there's more PDFs on my computer that I had saved and I was like, yeah, I don't really foresee myself stitching that soon. So I didn't print them, but I printed all these and I thought I'd show them to you real quickly. Um, I have a ton of JPEGs to also print out, but my last fall sometime, October-ish, my computer and my wireless printer decided that they aren't speaking to each other anymore. And I spent several hours <laughs> trying to get them to talk to each other, but they don't talk to each other. So in order to print, I have to take the computer, I keep the printer in a closet, so I have to take the computer all the way into the closet, squeeze in there, plug it in, stand there holding the computer, and print the stuff. Or I can use my phone, will still talk wirelessly to the printer. So I can print PDFs from my phone, but when I try to print the JPEGs, they like come out distorted and funny and you can't really read the patterns. So the JPEGs, I'm gonna need to like pull some stuff out of the closet, put a chair in there, go in and sit down, or I've gotta like unsnake all the cords and pull the whole printer out and set it up on a table somewhere or something. So the JPEGs just haven't happened. At some point they will, because there's a lot of them I really wanna stitch and I would really like to get them printed, but I just haven't, haven't gotten up the energy to do that yet. The, the PDFs were easy because I could just sit on the sofa with my phone and send them all. So I did that and I just wanted to share them with you guys. A ton of people have been doing stash dives. I don't have a lot of like purchased patterns um, that are hard. Like when I purchase a pattern, I'm typically getting a PDF online rather than like buying a physical pattern. So I don't have like a whole huge basket full of physical patterns to show you. I just keep my patterns in a binder in those page protector sheets. So it's also more difficult to go through and show them because you have to take them all out in order to show where they have the glare. So I just thought before I put these away, I'd show them to you. So this first little stack is the Be Long Stitch patterns that I wanna do. So this is from Just Cross, uh, Just Stitch from Works by ABC, this is Arlene Cohen. She's got Stitch. <coughs> This one is from Noteworthy Needle. Love that one. This one is just called Be Well from Cottage Garden. And it didn't print the little birds very well. You can see the little bird kind of, it, it printed really faint, but it's there. Um, and then this is from Beth Twist by Heartstring Samplery. 
So those are kind of my pile that's going to be my upcoming Freebie Friday Be Well and Stitch patterns. I'll probably choose mostly from those for my Fridays. Um, there might be a few others that I do. Um, well, there's actually some, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to stitch on today. I, I kind of need to pick my next pattern soon because I'm almost done with that uh, one from Jeanette Douglas that I'm doing. But I just go back and forth about which one of the, these patterns I want to do. So... I don't know, maybe going through them today will help me make a decision. So this stack is from Just Cross Stitch Magazine. So these are PDFs because my library used to have a subscription to Just Cross Stitch. Around Halloween last year, it seems like they stopped. They don't carry it anymore, um, but they used to have it. And so I had saved a bunch of the PDFs of things I wanted to stitch. So this one is from, let's see, November, December, 2013. And it's Let Us Be Thankful. And that is by Debbie Booth with My Big Toe Designs. Then we've got the Totally Nuts Doorknob Hanger from Norma Flake. It's Keep Safe Stitches. I thought that might look good on a candle wrap. And then I have two of these horn books. This is uh, Fall Pumpkins, Horn Book and Fob from, oh, Elizabeth. Toledo of Dance of the Needle. And then the other one, oh, I had another one, where to go? I thought they were in order here, but they're not. I know I have another one, patriotic one. Yeah, here we go. Uh, flowers and flags. So it's kind of a companion. They've got the pumpkins and then the flowers and flags. And then this is Elegant Pumpkin Bowl from Arlene Cohen, who's works by ABC. Oops, I haven't been telling you what issue these are all in. This is October 2018. If you want to know what any of these issues these are in, just let me know in the comments and I will happily check for you and let you know because I don't want to go back through it all. <laughs> I don't want to go through all these a second time. Also, similarly, I realized I didn't tell you really what the fabric was for very many of my projects. If you ever have a question about what fabric or threads or whatever I'm using, just put it in the comments and I'll happily answer you there because I am just apparently... I think this is 20, video 20 something. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm apparently not going to learn that I need to say that when I'm showing my projects. You would think by now, 20 videos in, I would have figured it out, but no. All right, 1814 Ann Woodall sampler. I really like a lot of the motifs down there at the bottom that I thought I could use for different things. Um, this is a reprodu reproduction by Dana Fasano from October 17. Then we've got Allison Bathgate Watson, 1856. Again, I really like a lot of the motifs that she's got in there. And this is by, oh gosh, does it say? Oh, here it is. Also by Deborah Fasano of Historic Handworks. And this one is from October 18th. This is Alsatian Redwork Heart by Irina Stepanova from Mitsuka Design Studio. Really like that. And it was in the February 2016 issue. And then this one, I'm gonna skip that one because it doesn't have a picture. It just has the pattern. It doesn't have a picture of it. I'm thinking something didn't print correctly with that one. This is Garnet and Gold Greetings by Liz Almond of Blackwork Journey from December 2017. And I thought those borders would be really good and that I could potentially use some of those blackwork borders in my printer's tray. All right, so let me move on to Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly. So this is from summer 2015. They had... Um, I had part one and then part two was in fall of 2015. This is the 1816 Beerland Sampler, which I mean, the thing, it's hard to tell in the picture, but it's quite the monster. It's huge, but gorgeous. Love it. And then 1855 Mini Beerland Sampler. And I think that this one doesn't say, yeah, for some reason it must be older because it um, it doesn't say what issue it's from. It didn't print what issue it was from. So 
but love that one too. That one's a much more manageable size. Then there is the 1837 reversible sampler part two. And I think that I, um, I had shown this one before because I, my library only had this part two. So I figured out what issue it was in. It didn't print on here, but I think I figured out at the time I had seen online what issue it was in. Oh, here, this is, um, I think it's summer and fall 2014. Summer and fall 2014 of Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly. So what intrigued me about it was the reversible nature of it. So I went on eBay and put in a saved search and eventually after a few months, an issue popped up and I was able to buy it. And so now I have part one and part two. But I just really liked the, the reversible part intrigued me. So we'll see what I end up doing with that. All right, this is Souvenir of France from Blackbird Designs. So now we're getting into some freebies here. I think all the rest of these are freebies and um, not, I think those were the only patterns from magazines and these are all freebies. So Blackbird Designs, Souvenir of France. And as far as I know, all of these are available. So if you can't find them online, uh, just Googling or looking on the website, let me know and I'll uh, see if I can find you a link or direct you to the right place to find it. This is from Stone Street Stitch Burke. It's called Winter Village. That one might go on my Jolly July this year. It's super cute. This is Gingerbread Manor. I'm trying to show you just the pictures and not the patterns, even though they're freebies. All right, and then we get into the drawn thread. So this is the Home for the Holidays. These only have the patterns. I'm gonna flash it real quick. So Home for the Holidays from Drawn Thread. Love and Pumpkin Keeper. It's a like a keeper for your um, uh, scissor fob. Scissor fob. I'm like trying to come up with the word thread, and I'm like, it is not thread. What is it? Scissor fob. Like a scissor fob pattern. Okay, so then these next ones are all from, um, it's a French blog and it's called Bien le Bonjour au Bourdieuses or Good Morning, uh, Good Morning to the Embroiderers, Good Morning to the Stitchers, something like that. And her name is Karine, Karine, I think it's Karine, I'm not sure. So some of these have pictures and some are just patterns, so I'll flash them quickly if they're just a pattern. This is Ronde de Vignes, it's Round of Urns or something like that. That's just part of it, it's, it's a circular pattern. So that's just like the part of the first page. And then this is, what's the name of it? Oh, Diverse Motifs. And it's just a bunch of little tiny motifs. So I thought uh, some of those might be good for filling the boxes in my printer's tray. Then this one, again, I thought I could split these up and put them in my printer's tray. And it is called Sampler Flowers Blue from the top, there's the picture of it. So it's like three different individual little samplers. And I thought I could split them up and put them in my printer's tray. And then this one is Arbuste au Fleurs. So Arbor of Flowers or something? I don't know what Arbuste is, but there it is. All right, this is just a pattern. DMC, if you've never been on there, has a ton of their antique patterns. Um, available now that are, you know, like original patterns came out, you know, over a hundred years ago and they've re-released them on their website. So this is just a bunch of borders and you can go on there and find a ton of different stuff. Lots of uh, alphabets and borders and things. All right. And then this is from the same blog, the Grills de Maurice, that I pulled that ABC Maison Bleu to send to Vana to have her finish in an ornament for my china cabinet. So she has quite a few other patterns on her website. And this is Winter Sampler. Just a quick flash, because there's no pictures. Um, and then she has a series um, that say, it's winter time, it's spring time for all four seasons. So this is Winter Cottage. Spring. Summer. And fall. I really want to do those, and those might get started as part of my Freebie Fridays next. And then this one is Sweetheart's Cottage. All right, just a few more to go here. This is from the Chalet de Perel. Um, the house of, I don't know what Perel, if Perel's is someone's last name or if it translates to something, because I'm not familiar with Perel's. Um, but the house of Perel's. 
And it's just a sweet little Easter. It's just named Eggs. Sweet little basket full of blue Easter eggs with a little bunny at the bottom. Super cute. And then this is from a website called Les Fils de Mimi. So Mimi is her name. This word, feels, F-I-L-S. Okay, when I was in high school French, that translated as son, like S-O-N, your male child. Um, and every time I copy like French cross-stitch instructions, if I have a pattern, a PDF I've purchased from a French website, and I paste it into Google Translate, it translates feels as son. But that doesn't make any sense. I think looking at the context of the rest of the sentences, it should mean like floss or thread. So I'm guessing it's one of those French words that, you know, like in English, we've got, you know, the same word that means two totally different things. And you gotta look at the context to figure out what it is. So I'm thinking it's floss or thread or something like that. So the threads of Mimi, maybe. And this one is the little, just that center portion of that tray. It's a pretty blurry picture, but it's just got some cute little geometric uh, floral designs that I thought might be good to fill um, different things. And then I love this one, Inspiration Quaker Mary Rose. Also from the Field of Mimi. And one more from her, Romance Blue. So, those are all of my PDFs and freebie patterns that I had. One day I will print out all those JPEGs and share those with you. But for now, I've got enough stitching with these. Um, I think that is just about it, except my older daughter has been doing a lot of cross stitch and she wanted to share with you. And then my younger daughter also um, wants to say hi, I think. So I'm gonna call them in. Are you ready? Your stitching is still over there. And can you get Caitlin and come on over? So lots of stuff to show you. This is a pretty long video. I'm just gonna have them come in real quick and show their stuff and then we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, we will hopefully be back sooner rather than later. It's just been tough with school um, to figure out how to squeeze this in. School is really a lot of work right now with having it at home. So she doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to come in? Okay. That's fine. All right. So this is Emily and she has been working on her cross stitch. Let me move over a little bit. Okay. Wait, show me your pattern first of what you were working on. So, or, no, no, not that one. Your, where's your, what that looks like. I'm going to take it out of the, um, okay. out of the hoop for you so that they can actually see it. She was not prepared. Sorry. Do you have it? Okay. So this was a little kit that we found quite a while ago. And she started quite a while ago. It's a love stitching pattern. Yep, it's from a kit from Bucilla, my first stitch This is how far I got on it. So I think the very first time we showed it, you only had like four stitches in there. Yeah, I in the V. The V. And you can really tell the difference now in the stitches that she is making. Squirrel. Yep, there's a squirrel. And uh, you also Literal did... squirrel, not a, you know, distracting cross stitch squirrel where we all get. <laughs> I'll get distracted by other stuff. So then she also started designing her own. So I have uh, PC Stitch, the program, and she wanted to get on there and design something. So this is what she came up with the other day. Yeah. And, and then we went through um, all my DMC and she picked out colors. This is how far I got on it. Yeah. I just have to do cross stitch. Yep. She's gotten the all the way around the border and yay, high five because it matched up. Awesome. First border and it matched up. I showed her how to do the counting thing where you cross where you make an X every 10 stitches and just do half crosses the rest of the way. So that came out great. And now she's just got to go back around and cross it and then start filling in all the rest. So she's moving right along with it. Yeah. All right. Should we close this up? I think we're done. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks everybody. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm also at stitching with the waves over there and you can hit the like button below and also the subscribe and then if you click the bell until it is dark gray it'll notify you whenever we make our next video since i'm not super regular with a schedule what's that for high five yes oh okay did a good job oh thanks i did a good job closing it thanks i'm getting better i'm listening to you guys and, and learning all right thanks everybody we'll see you again next time happy stitching Bye.